Academic research, writing, and learning requires more than just productive skills of speaking, writing, and putting things out into the world. They also require receptive skills of listening, reading, taking in information, and integrating it over time. Just like a chef can't cook meals for customers if they don't receive food in the kitchen first, you can't be an effective and productive academic researcher and writer if you don't actually receive ideas, information, data, and contemplate it over time. So this week in our co-working community, the Academic Writer Space, there it is live, where we co-work alongside each other all week long and get real work done in real time. Our theme for the week is receptivity. So here are five tips for enhancing your receptivity skills. Number one, schedule time for receptivity. It can be easy to have a work plan where there's a lot of focus on getting things written, getting things done, analyzing data, but we actually forget to schedule time for thinking, for contemplation, for receiving the wisdom from the other articles we're reading or the data itself. Number two, pace yourself. Just like a sponge can only absorb so much water at a time, you can only take in and comprehend and synthesize and understand so much information at once. So give yourself multiple opportunities, for example, to try to understand a difficult theoretical piece or an article that was written in a way that's hard to understand. We often need multiple interactions with a piece of work to be able to receive and more fully understand it. Number three, prioritize the regulation of your nervous system and feeling safe. In many academic contexts, it's easy to feel a sense of fear, doubt, and to feel unsafe. And when we feel dysregulated and unsafe, we tend to get into tighter, more contracted, protected states that aren't actually open and receptive to learning. So if you prioritize the regulation, the soothing, the calming of your nervous system and help yourself feel safer, you will find that it's actually easier to be receptive. Number four, receive feedback from others with care. There are academics out there and reviewers who tend to provide feedback without first filtering it through a heart energy. And that can be very hard to receive, especially when we've invested so much time and energy into our work, having someone else tear it apart, that's hard. So when you get feedback, First of all, take a deep breath, slow yourself down. Don't try to understand the feedback as quickly as possible and race through it. That's unkind to your nervous system. Go slow, read it one piece at a time. You don't need to fully understand it. Most often the first round of reviewing feedback, it tends to overwhelm our systems. Sometimes it might shut us down or cause us to think we're not smart enough. We don't belong here. We're never gonna earn our degree. We, you know, We should just quit now. Remember that feedback is someone's opinion and often an expression of how they were trained and their idiosyncratic preferences. You're allowed to take your time with it. You can have another person be there with you as you review the feedback, maybe even have someone else review it for you first to tell you their overview before you look at it. Their feedback is not a statement of your intelligence, your future, your potential, or your worth. And finally, number five, learn to receive yourself as you are in the moment. There's always a version of you who shows up to work and that version of you may or may not be compatible with getting work done. If you first receive yourself non-judgmentally, oh, there's an irritable version of me that's here. Oh, I'm kind of rattled and shaken. I'm not compatible with working on my lit review today. Oh, I'm focused and I feel really good. I'm ready to go. Okay, great. You can dive into your work. But if the version of you who has shown up isn't compatible with what you said you were going to do, that's actually good news that you know that, that you received yourself as you are, because now you can do something about it. Can you do something to soothe and comfort yourself and help yourself get into a more compatible state with what you were going to do? Or do you actually need to change the task at hand, switch and do something different, carve off a smaller piece, lower your standards. When you receive yourself as you are, you're practicing your receptivity skills and setting the stage for you to actually coach and guide yourself to work effectively given your current reality. 
All right, everyone, as usual, I am so looking forward to this week. I love exploring these themes with all of you. Thank you to all of you who are members of the Academic Writer Space. For those of you who want to come and co-work with me and our wonderful facilitators, go to theacademicwriterspace.com and sign up for a free week of membership. We will be so happy to co-work with you. See you on Zoom, everybody.